Hi, oh, g'day, welcome to Farming Live Australia. Recently I bought a portable bandsaw and the brand I bought was Makita and I bought it from Total Tools. The saw cost $508 skin only. It came with a Makita blade and it was 18 oh, teeth to the for... inch. While I was on the website looking at the saws, I thought, oh, I better look at blades and what's available and all that. Anyway, I had a look at the Makita blade that was available and one cost you one dollars and I thought, ooh, that could add up if you went through them. And after a fair bit of research and a bit more looking around on Total Tools website, website, I discovered that they sell mostly Milwaukee brand bandsaw blades and the first thing I thought was yeah but do they fit the Makita saw. I noticed it said on the pack that they suit all saws with the same band measurement so I thought oh well they, they probably be alright. So I bought a packet of the 18 tooth ones and a packet of three cost $63 so I bought them and I thought oh well I'll give them a go and make sure they're going to fit on the saw and then I'll further investigate what's available. Anyway the blades turned up and they fit the saw and worked okay. I decided I decided to buy some of the other Milwaukee blades that were available for it and do a comparison and see whether there's much difference. The, the first ones that I've got here are 18 teeth to the inch and it says on it deep cut portable bandsaw blade. This one also says deep cut portable bandsaw blade and it's a 12 to 14 teeth per inch. Up the top here extreme metal blade and they are dearer than the normal blade and you hear it says quite boldly more cuts, less ch blade changes, three times longer in stainless steel, cuts more material, two times faster, 25% less power. So they're making some pretty big claims. I'm wondering whether they live up to those claims. Likewise here, we've got all the same blurb on the front, but this one is an eight to 10 teeth per inch. If you look on the back of all the packets, it's got this little grid. This first one, which is these patterns down here, it says it's the best in the class for what for whatever you're trying to do. And then the plain green says they're good. Yellow says they're okay. Gray says they're not recommended. What it recommends is the eight to 10 teeth per inch are supposed to be the best ones for thick metal. And the 12 to 14 ones are supposed to be good for medium and light metal. And the 18 teeth per inch are supposed to be suitable for thin metal. So we're gonna test it all and see if there's any difference in the cutting time it takes, how long the blades last, how much power they use, etc. We're about ready to start our experiments and to try and get an accurate comparison what I'm going to do is use a new blade each time. I'll put on a brand new blade, do a fair few cuts with that blade, then put on the next blade, do exactly the same cuts with that blade and so on. And what we will do is compare the time it takes and if we can see any significant battery usage between the three. For the first cuts we're going to do, the thick metal extreme blade, and it is a eight to 10 teeth per inch. This is the battery that I'll be using, and it's fully charged. Here we go. The eight to, eight to 10 teeth per inch. Pat is beside me with the phone and I'm telling her when to stop and start the stopwatch so we can get an accurate average time over all the cuts. Stop! But one other thing I'm going to do with these experiments is try to keep the angle of the saw as best as I can on the same angle on all the cuts. Go. Stop. They claim that these blades are suitable for stainless steel, so we're going to give that a go. This is a piece of Sked 40 pipe, and it's two inch. Go, Pat.
up. This box section here, it's about 1.2 millimetres thick wall. I'm going to try this on the blades that are recommended for the thick material, the extreme ones, the 8 to 10 teeth, and see how they go on thin metal. Go. It cuts it all right, you've just got to be careful not to jam the saw because it's so aggressive. After the, all those cuts on that blade, there is no drop in the voltage. These cuts will be done with the one that says thin metal extreme blade, and it is 12 to 14 teeth to the inch. Stop. You ready? Go. I realise this is pretty boring to watch because it's happening so slowly, but I don't want to speed the film up and change the concept of how quick it cuts. So unfortunately, I'm just going to have to leave it on that film speed. This blade is just getting blunter by the second. I don't think these particular blades are suitable whatsoever for thicker stainless. And when I say thicker, I mean anything probably over one and a half mil. I just don't think they're suitable at all. The 8 to 10 teeth extreme ones didn't seem to blunten in this material whatsoever over the three cuts. So there is a significant difference and although on the packet it says that they're reasonable for this job, I don't think that's true.
flogging a dead horse here. I'm about ready to chuck it in. I don't know how this is going to go now because it, I think it's a bit blunt from that stainless. It didn't want to cut it really. Okay, go Pat. On that last cut, I gave up because the blade was just so blunt after that stainless. It seems to me for those extreme blades on stainless that's thick at all, it's just not suitable whatsoever. We'll have a look at the battery and see what it says. Yeah, significantly lower than the other time. It's only got two bars of power left out of the four that it should have on full charge. What I've decided to do, because that other blade got destroyed on that stainless, I'm going to put a new 12 to 14 blade in and just complete the cuts on that thin material just to see how it actually does go in the thin material. I think it'll actually be fine. I just don't think it's suitable for that stainless, that's all. I'll now try out the 12 to 14 teeth per inch blade in the thin box section. Go. Stop. This is the standard cheaper 18 tooth per inch blade. This is the 40 by 40 by 2.5 wall box. This is the thin wall box. Go, Pat. Battery's still full. Of course, I didn't cut the stainless steel and I'm not going to with that blade. It's not recommended for it. I, up until now, I've only been using those 18 teeth one and I thought they were pretty good. And I'm actually very surprised with the outcome. Given that the blades are dearer and all the blurb on the packet, I thought there'd be a huge difference. And they're sort of really not. I really do think on the thick metal, 
it goes through it easier with the coarser blades. The middle type extreme blade, the 12 to 14 tooth, I wouldn't even worry about buying that at all again. I think I'd just buy, so I'd just buy the really coarse ones, the 8 to 10 teeth extreme for if you had thick metal. And I would buy the 18 teeth standard blade for general thinner stuff and stainless I'd just use the angle grinder. I got all the figures for the times everything took so I'll read them out to you. So the flat bar, the 50 by 6 mild steel, the 8 to 10 teeth took an average of 14 seconds per cut. The 12 to 14 tooth took an average of 18.5 seconds and the 18 tooth standard blade took 19 seconds. The 40 by 40 by 3 box, the 8 to 10 tooth took 12 seconds. The 12 to 14 took 16.5 seconds and the 18 tooth standard blade took 15 seconds. So I don't know what's going on there. The Sked 40 stainless steel 2 inch or 50 millimetre the only really successful blade on it was the 8 to 10 teeth and it took 17 seconds per cut, which I think is really good. The 12 to 14 tooth, if you watch the movie, you'll see what the outcome of that was. And the 18 tooth standard blade is not recommended for stainless, so I didn't want to destroy it to try it. The thin wall box, the 30 by 30, the 8 to 10 tooth took 6.5 seconds. The 12 to 18 tooth took 8 seconds and the standard 18 tooth blade took 8.5 seconds. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. We'll see you next time.